Jesus' name we pray. Oh, 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 I got a speaker. Oh, God, is. let us all stand, let us all stand. Let us all stand, let us all stand. Let us all stand, let us all stand. Somebody say amen. Oh, the blood. Blood, blood, blood. Blood. I have known. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. Watch this, watch this. I beat the blood. I beat the blood. The blood. It's a good the God. Blood. He loves you. Blood. I have known Pastor Jay Gilbert Hallelujah. almost since the day he started in ministry. And I have watched God bless his life yes, God. year after year. We all prayed for him when he came and spoke to us and didn't have a wife. And God sent him beautiful Tiffany. We love you, Tiffany. God gave them two wonderful sons. Moved in from Buffalo, New York to Pittsburgh. Gave him a great church. I was just there with him a couple of weeks ago. God's hand is on this young man, and I know him, and I'm just so honored that he's here. Would you all stand with me this morning and let us give him a wonderful welcome. Emmanuel Christian Center, welcome. You can do better than that. Oh, you can do better than that. The blood! Somebody shout, the blood! Bless you, Pastor. We good? All right. Can somebody praise the Lord in the house today? I just need to know if there's anybody that knows how to plead the blood in Denver, Colorado. If it had not been for the blood that you wouldn't be here today. And some of y'all got saved from death and from heart attacks. And you might have lost a job, but even when you lose everything, how many of y'all know that you can still plead the blood? 15 years still pleading the blood. Come on, somebody. How many of y'all thankful for your pastor and first lady? Or oh, you can do a little bit better than that. 15 years. I need you to turn to somebody and slap them, say 15, baby. 15, baby, 15, and we're still here, and the best is yet to come. You haven't seen anything yet, Emmanuel Christian Center. If you think the past has been good, just go on and look behind you. If you think that was good, get ready, because you haven't seen anything, because your most best and blessed days are still out in front of you. You haven't ridden in your nice car. You haven't lived in your nicest house. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. You haven't been in your nicest job. You haven't been in your nicest office. You haven't sang your best song. You haven't shouted your best shout. You haven't seen anything yet of what God is getting ready to do in your life. Do I got a witness in the house? 15 years, and we're still here. Koradabashata, still here once was in the school, but now got your own place. Come on, somebody. God has been a good God. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. I want to bring my wife up real quick. Lady Tiffany, can you come and say hello to everybody? Good morning, Emmanuel Christian Center. How's everybody doing? You know, it's always good to be here, and there's a few reasons why. One, is because we get an opportunity to spend time with these wonderful people. They are blessed. Blessed. You are blessed to have these blessed pastors. Amen? 
and then it's always it's always nice nicer weather I think here sometimes but then the worship team you guys are blessed amen you guys are blessed there was a woman that was shouting up Amen. Amen. And I want to say this, that there's no place to be than God's presence. Amen. And when you're in the house of God, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm so full already. I, I, I'm stirred up. And when you, when you can come to a place when you're just, I mean, the presence of God is all over. You can have the nicest building. You can have the nicest property. But if you don't have the presence of God, you don't have anything. Amen? So I believe that the best is yet to come. Amen? And I can't wait to hear about what God is going to do. You know, this ministry really helped us through a difficult time. And some of you may have been here when we came and we shared we lost our, our baby. And that was a rough time. And I know that some of you were praying. And then I, I'll never forget the word, and I mentioned this before, the word that Pastor Alvin shared and Pastor Carmel. He said, God, he prayed with us, but he said, God will make it up to you. And you heard we have two boys that are everywhere, but God makes it up. So this ministry is a ministry that is awesome. That This ministry is a ministry that carried us through a, a dark and difficult time. This ministry is a ministry that God's hand and his presence is all around it. So I congratulate you both on this 15 year. And I'm just gonna say one more thing. Jordan, there was a little, little man there that was praising okay he reminds me of our son and he was matter of fact believe it or not he was praising in the womb we saw little pictures and he was just jumping and praising but he is showing all of us how to worship how to praise how to tap into God's presence amen and I believe where's his parents are his parents in here in the house there's a gift and there's a call on his life he is going to make a massive, massive impact for his generation. A massive impact for the kingdom of God and his generation. Amen. So, I'm, I don't know about you, but I am excited. I am filled up. I thank God for this man. I thank God for my husband. Anybody that's single, wait on God. Amen. Wait on God. He will send you his best. And... One of the things that I love about him, he has so many great qualities, but he's a God chaser, right? That's what you want. you want. You want somebody that's a God chaser. You want somebody that is seeking God's presence. So I always get excited. I'm, you know, I get to have him all the time. But um, I'm excited because he always comes with a relevant word. He always comes with a word that's impactful and influential. And I know that today is not going to be any different. And I know that today that you're not going to be the same way that you came. Amen. I need to start with something because while the minister is standing, God spoke some things to my spirit for you guys. And if you can bring it up, fine. If not, I'll read it to you. Acts chapter 6, I want to show you where your church is. God dropped a couple of words in my spirit, and one of them was increase. I got a couple of people. I shouldn't have to even say. I could leave and fly back just by simply saying increase. And I heard the Lord say multiplication. Increase. Multiplication. I've been hearing a little resounding. He said favor. I hear the word blessing like you have never had before. Do you know what the blessing is? It's the empowerment for success. It doesn't matter what you go through. You can never determine your blessing based upon what's going on. Your blessing is within you, and it changes everything around your life. I don't need nothing to get the blessing of God because it's already in me. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. I heard the Lord say increase, 
multiplication and blessing. This is the 15th year. There's three derivatives there, three derivatives of five. Five is the number of grace, uh, the first season of five, the, the second season of five, the third season of five. But God says, I'm bringing you into another level of grace uh, that you have never had before. There's a greater level of increase uh, that you've never had before. There's a greater level of anointing uh, that you have never had before. There's an empowerment uh, that you've never had before. There's a shout uh, you ain't never let out before. There's a death you ain't never faced before but God says today I am dropping grace in this house somebody shout grace grace is in this place you said well give me scripture pastor Acts chapter 6 verse number 1 now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying there arose a complaint every complaint watch this is not a bad complaint there are some people that murmur, but there are some complaints that are, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm in my zone already. There are some complaints that happen because God has ordained it because he's calling you to shift to a different, oh, no, 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 no. There are some complaints that will bother a pastor, but they really shouldn't bother him. What God is saying is I'm placing a demand upon you that is in you already, and I'm going to release something. Every complaint is not a bad complaint. It is meant to shift you to your next level. Some complaints, uh, when your wife complains against you, sometimes God's trying to bring something out of you that's never been there before. When your kids complain, if you don't have a spiritual ear, you'll get mad and tell them to shut up and sit down, mind your place, when actually it's God placing a demand. Yeah, yeah, he's preaching now placing a demand upon what's already in you. Somebody lay your hands on your belly and say, there's grace in me. There was a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Neglect, I hear the Lord, man, I'm moving right now. Neglect is a sign of lack. Whenever there's lack around you, it's because, watch this, when you're blessed, you are blessed to be a blessing. Oh, Jesus, help me preach it today. Help me preach it today. Keep playing, man. You good, you good, you good. Whenever there is lack, it's because there's actually an anointing in you. Whenever God shifts your season and takes you to a new place, you usually don't have already in you, or let me say, around you, what God has already put in you. So when there's lack, you're looking around saying, I don't feel like I have enough. I, I don't know how I'm going to make this happen because God is the total source of your supply. And so he places a, a lack around you. He places murmuring and complaining around you. And a lot of people get upset when really they should start shouting because what you have to understand is that there is a well within you that is getting ready to spring up that you have never had before in your life. There was lack. I'm trying to show you where you are, Emmanuel Christian Center. There was lack. And look at this here. Because they were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the 12 summoned the multitude and said, It's not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Pastor, I'm what the Lord spoke to me. He said, Your ministry is getting ready to see increase and multiplication. But it's not going to come the way you think. It's going to come in this form. There's going to be neglect in areas. But God's going to place a demand upon you. And God said, when you begin to feel uncomfortable, don't think it a strange thing. But begin to say, thank you, Lord. And even when you don't have what you need to have, the fact that you are getting ready to license and ordain, however, umpteen ministers, God says, I'm getting ready to place a demand in them. But you're going to feel it first. But some of you out there right now are going to say, well, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. You have to understand you are blessed. And so sometimes you've got to dig a brand new well. You've got to dig a brand new thing because there's a new grace coming to your life that you have never had before. So God spoke me said, when you guys start feeling frustrated in the season, don't think it a strange thing. There's going to be a greater demand upon you. There's going to be a stretching. There's going to be some changes that God is calling you to make. And as you make those changes, through that frustration, it is going to release something. Somebody shout release. It's not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. What happens to most pastors and ministers is when they start seeing neglect and lack, they start going to work. 
But when, wow, <laughs> when God sends you neglect and lack, it's because you've already prepared some people that you need to place a demand upon in order for the ministry to see increase and multiplication. That's one thing, if I could tell any of you ministers, when you are anointed to be a minister and a leader, your job is not to do the work, but to equip others, to anoint them, to stir up in them that the word of God can go forth in a greater way. Therefore, brethren, seek out, stretch your hands towards your pastor and shout wisdom. Seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, who we may appoint over this business, but he needs to keep on, she needs to keep on giving themselves to the word of God. When there's lack in this ministry, I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, I'm anointing you for increase. And the Lord said, if you'll take care of the needs of this house, I'm going to take care of the needs of your house. Oh, come on, somebody. Stop praying for a breakthrough and start making a breakthrough happen for somebody else. And God said, what you make happen for somebody else, he's behind the scenes, baby, working it out for you. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, there's a shift in the atmosphere. Something is changing. Something is shifting. I feel it in my spirit right now. I feel it in the atmosphere. When I walk out those doors, this place will not be the same. Your life will not be the same. Your marriage is not going to be the same. Your children will be saved. That job will happen. That bills will be paid. That mind will be renewed. That family will be blessed. That door will open. That devil will be defeated. I'm going to give myself continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And they're saying, please the whole multitude. And they chose a bunch of people. I'm not going to read through them all. Verse number six. I'm going to show you what's going to happen next week. Whom they set before the apostles and when they prayed, they laid their hands on them. Somebody say they laid their hands. Because now what's on the house got in them. Are you all hearing me? Now here you go. Are you ready? Here's where you're going to get ready and shout. When you start taking care of God's house, there's something that begins to happen in the body of Christ. It starts, watch this, the frustration. I, I'm prophesying. I didn't plan any of this. It starts with the frustration on the head. That's why ministers must be mature because if they don't understand the complaints, they'll get mad and start beating the sheep, not understanding that God is placing a demand upon them for more. Greater always comes on the other side of frustration. Greater always comes on the other side of lack. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst because they're empty. Why? There's a filling coming for Emmanuel Christian Center, the likes of which you have never seen before. I'm talking to some people that are frustrated right now. I'm talking to some people that can't sleep at night. I'm talking to some people that are trying to find their way and can't figure out what's going on. I'm praying, God. I'm fasting, but I still feel empty. It's because there's a greater level coming for you. There's a greater dimension. There's a higher height. There's a deeper depth. There's a greater fruit. Come on, somebody. There's a greater anointing that you have never had before that God has you positioned for right now. That's why when frustration hits, if you're not mature, you'll get mad. You'll get into your flesh. <laughs> why these people, they need to grow up. They need to mature. They need to stop all this complaining and talking and da 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 da, -da. God got rid of Ananias and Sapphira the chapter before. Y'all miss that one. There are some people that are doing wrong. You ain't got to do nothing. God will kick them out. But when people start complaining in the body, it's because it's a sign that there's increase. There's a sign that there's more. I don't know who I'm talking to. Who am I talking to today that you're wondering why you feel so empty? You're wondering why you feel so alone. You feel like you're struggling. God wanted me to encourage you and say, you are right where you need to be. Your blessing is on the other side of your empty. Your breakthrough is on the other side of your lack. Yeah. 
Look at this here. This is powerful. Look at verse number 7. After they got through that, the word of God spread. And the number of the disciples, and the number of the disciples multiplied. I heard somebody say it. The number of the disciples multiplied. Somebody shout greater. It's on the other side of the frustration. God spoke to me right here and said, when you licensed these ministers, you did not take them through that by happenstance. And it's not a coincidence that this, oh, I'm feeling it so much in here right now. On the other side, after we leave out of here, you're next week, you're already stepping into a level that you've never walked into before. And you can't just look at them. But God said there's more in them than you even know. And so the breakthrough, the greater is going to come out of you and out of you and out of you. And as you take care of God's kingdom, as you take care of the man and woman of God, as you take care of the vision, more is coming to your life. The vision, the vision, the vision that God's going to give this man and woman of God for this next season is going to be greater than they've ever had before. Many times God enlarges your vision when you have neglect and when you have lack and when you have empty. God calls you always to go buy that building and you ain't got two nickels to rub together. Come on. God will tell you to go love your spouse when they tell you to roll over. If you wasn't there Friday night, you don't know what I'm talking about. When you don't have anything left, I'm talking to someone. I feel, I feel something pushing me. God will tell you to sow a seed when you've got a bill in front of you and you don't even have enough to pay the bill and God says take what you take the cake that you have that you're going to make for you and your son and make me a cake first I'm talking to some people that are ready for more you're tired of where you've been you've had enough of what you've had God said it's your season for more right now how do I know if I'm supposed to get more because you don't got enough that's why you're frustrated because God says, I've called you to greater. I've called you to more. And let me say this, that's why you can't tell everybody about your frustration. Some people think you're complaining. But if you've ever talked to somebody that has greatness within them, they don't get frustrated when they tell you, I need more. Why? Because I've been there too. I know what it's like to walk the floors at night and think that the heavens are brass and God is silent. But when God is silent, baby, that's when God is doing his best work. If my kids are banging on the walls, kicking around, I'm not nervous. But when I can't hear nothing, they're always up to something. But when they're doing something they shouldn't be doing, they get quiet. God's not up to something he shouldn't be doing. He's up to something that he should be doing for you. But he's got top secret knowledge. And he's not going to let the devil know. He's not going to let the principalities know. He's not going to let your boss know. It's reserved strictly for you, baby. And God is up to something great for your life. That's why... When you start experiencing lack and empty, it's when God is actually up to something. I feel something in here. I, I feel my heart going out to some people that feel so empty. And you're still serving the church. And you're still praising God. And you're still doing what God told you to do. And you're still tithing. And you're still on the praise and worship team. Sitting in the back row. You're still clapping. Pastor says, stretch your hands out, shout help. I done shouted help for 50 times. I'm tired, but you're still doing it. You're still obedient. You don't understand that you're digging a well, baby. You're digging a deeper well. But I'm telling somebody right now, you're about to hit a gusher, baby. And something is getting ready to come out of you that is going to scare the depths of hell. There's a shout that's going to come out of you. There's a praise that's going to come out of you. There's a holly followed by a hallelujah that's going to come out of you. The devil should have left you alone because I'm telling you right now, you're closer than you've ever been before. You're nearer than you've ever been before. And the best is yet to come. 
So on the other side, I had a great message prepared, brother. I had a great message. I was sitting, he said, the ministers, I think they said 19, are getting ready to be licensed. God said, it's not an accident, it's not a coincidence, that as soon as we step out of these doors, you need to shout. God said, rejoice over 15 today. Praise me over 15 today. And the only thing I want you to remember about the past 15 years is I'm the total source of your supply. But when you walk out of those doors, don't you even look back here because it will never be the same as it is today. Come on, just do it again. Look over your shoulders and wave bye-bye. Come on, and look ahead and bring it on. Tell it, bring it on. I'm ready. I've been waiting. I'm anticipating. My time is now. My season is now. I believe in God. This is my moment now. I'm ready for my family to get saved. I'm ready for my spouse to come. Come on, single people. Come on, single people. Don't be ashamed to shout because you want to get married. Don't be afraid. Say, God, I thank you. I've been faithful. I told no to Willie. I told no to Bobby. I told no to Susan. I still followed you. Even when it wasn't your real for my life, and Lord, I still kept coming. So now I'm ready for the best that you have in store for my life. Somebody shout, I'm ready. Shout it again. How do you know if I'm ready? Because you're empty. I'm without, but I'm still hungry for more. I know that there's more. I can barely get up in the morning, but I know there's more. I can barely put one foot in front of the other, but I still believe there's more. My heart is broken, but I still keep putting one foot in front of the other. Nobody knows my name, but I still keep on going. Nobody recognizes what I do, but God, you see all things. I'm here to let somebody know that God saw every tear that you cried, every prayer that you prayed, every paper you picked up for your pastor. God said, I see it all, and this is the season that my reward is coming to get your life. Come on, 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 somebody bless him. Come on, somebody praise him. Your blessings on the other side of this praise. Your blessings on the other side of this praise. Your blessings on the other side of this hand clap. Your blessing is on the other side of this dance. Your blessing is on the other side. It's on the other side. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on, we're almost there. We're almost there. You're almost there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, empty people. Come on, empty people. Come on. Your breakthrough is on the other side today. It's on the other side today. It's on the other side. It's on the other side. Come on and praise it. The devil starts telling you, go by what you feel. Go by what you're looking at. You don't understand. I'm telling you, Pastor Robin, there's greatness in this house. You're going to need the other spaces down the road. No, no, no. Let me help you. See, let me break you out of a slavery mentality. Not because of him. But because of you, because of you, and 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 because of you, 
and because of you, there's greatness inside of this house. Jordan, you ain't seen anything yet. There's records in you. I'm not talking about just hip-hop. I'm talking about praise and worship. There's more coming out of you. Greater is coming forth. This is your season. This is your time. This is your moment. Greater is coming. Get ready for dreams and visions. Get ready for more. Get ready for divine connections. Get ready for songs, not that other people wrote, but that come forth out of your own spirit. In the name of Jesus, more increase now in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name increase multiply now 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 in Jesus name now now I'm not talking about next week. I'm not talking about next month. I'm talking about God sent me to release a now anointing. When you go home, look for it. Check on your cell phone. Look in every corner, because your blessing is getting ready to hunt you down and overtake and overthrow your life. More, 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 more. In the name of Jesus, it's on you. There it is right there. 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 There it is. 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 More, 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 more. There's got to be more, Lord. More in my family. More in my bank account, more anointing, more parking spots, more space, more, more in my mind, more in my body, more in my spirit. Somebody shout more. More. It's coming. It's here. It's here. Somebody shout it's here. I've been hearing that for a long time. You know what's amazing? When Jesus' season changed, he didn't even know it. His mama had to tell him, you need to get moving. You say, why is that? Because you can become so humbled that you don't even realize how humbled you've become that you don't follow any orders until your authority releases you. You don't hear about anything from Jesus from the time he gets lost in the temple. The Bible says he went and submitted himself. I hear the Lord saying, Pastor, and there's some people here that have been serving you that God's getting ready to release into more. Hear me. I hope y'all recording this. And what's going to happen, you're going to start seeing people in there and God's going to say, it's his time. Yeah. It's her time. Yeah. The frustration's going to start here, and it's going to flow all the way through. But the release also starts here and goes all the way through. i got to hurry up. That's the reason why if he starts getting vision and revelation and wants to change things in the church, don't get mad. But pastor, we've been doing it like this for 15 years. Did you hear the prophet? When you walk out the door, don't look back. I'm doing a new thing. And now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? See, when it was time for the abundance of rain, before that happened, Elijah was sustained at the brook. The widow, I'm sorry, the, the raven brought the bread and flesh in the morning, the bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank from the brook. But what happened is the brook dried up. When the, if you read the next verse, the Bible says, then the word of the Lord came. Y'all missing it right now. See, what's happening, when you start getting dry, there's a kairos moment and a revelatory word. So he says, now go to the widow woman at Zarephath, and there I sustained her to sustain you. Watch this. Watch this. I'm helping somebody. The widow woman had her little bit, but the man of God had the vision for more. 
she didn't have enough for him, her, or anybody. But he had a word. Thank God for a man of God and a woman of God that have a word. As long as you've got a word, you've got everything that you'll ever need. Thank God for pastors of prayer. Thank God for ministers that get on their knee and seek God and come out with a word. Oh. And she took that little bit and made him a cake first. And the Bible said, watch this, she and her household. If your kids ain't saved, you need to praise God that they ain't got nothing to do with them. She and her household. Your obedience triggers family blessing. My obedience has something to do with her and those two boys at home. They don't even realize why they're so blessed, but daddy is following the Lord, and as a result, they're going to be blessed. Do I got any men that follow the Lord that can shout? Come on, man, you can do a little bit better than that. Do I got any men that follow the Lord that can shout? So she got a word, and it released. And guess what happened? Then, watch this. I can see what, what happened. That barrel of meal and cruise of oil started to run out. And then Elijah said, I hear a sound. I'm just here today because I hear something in the atmosphere. But I don't have enough. We've been in a drought for three and a half years. I hear a sound of the abundance of rain. I hear a sound of multiplication, too much overflow, double for your trouble. I hear a sound that there will be no lack. I hear a sound that God's going to give you more than you can handle. I hear a sound that you're going to get married soon. I hear a sound that your son and daughter are going to come to this altar and bow their knee at an old rugged cross and get called into ministry. I hear a sound. And he went, and I'm closing with this. He went seven times. Other times he got to work, just went. This time he went, watch this, and he had to have somebody in agreement with him. 20, two twos, agreement. That's why the devil wants to break people away from you. Because whether you realize it or not, let me talk to people that may be offended. You need his agreement. See, whenever, whenever God has connected you to somebody, the devil will always use the spirit of offense to break you away from where you need to be because even though you divorce somebody and let them go, doesn't mean God divorced where the blessing is. You just got to wait until you, he's got to wait until he matures you long enough to get over yourself to get back into agreement. Get over your offense. See, so you know what the problem is? A lot of people say, Pastor, I'm offended. No, really, they're convicted. They just don't know the difference. Right. I'm offended. That's called conviction, baby, whether you realize it or not. Seven times he had to go back. Watch this. And this is what I'm going to say, and I'm going to give it to Pastor Elvin. He went back the seventh time, the number of completion. And the guy said, I see a cloud. Size of a man's hand. God said, whatever you've been believing for, this is your season of release. And whatever, when you start seeing that little bit, all of a sudden your son after five years says, tell me about Pastor Elvin. You need to take off and say, oh, oh Jesus. The cloud. It wasn't the whole sky. Just a little bit. A little bit with God goes a long way. A little bit of meal, a little bit of oil, with a whole lot of obedience, goes a long way. Can I give you one more story? Because it's for everybody. When Jesus had the 5,000, they were in a place of lack. 
And they said, what are we going to do? We don't have enough. He said, what do you have amongst you? Five loaves, two fish. What is this amongst so many? Somebody took the little bit and brought it to a man with a word. Now watch this. This is why if you're not serving, you need to be serving. Let me show you why. If you want to go from handfuls to baskets, watch this. The little boy brought the loaves and the fishes and they fed the whole 5,000. How many disciples were there? How many baskets were left over? How many baskets were left over? While they were out serving, God was home putting their overflow away. Well, Pastor, I got to be in Sunday morning. I got to get a word. You got a word in you. And if you'll go start serving with your couple of loaves and fishes, God's going to start putting overflow in your life, in your home, in your mailbox, in your bank account, in every area of your life, if you start serving the house. So they went from handfuls to baskets in a season of lack. God is the only God that can take you from a season of lack into a time of overflow when you have nothing. Serve your pastor. More is coming to Emmanuel Christian Center. Increase favor that removes the labor. Grace is coming. Lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice that, Lord, I declare their delay is over. I declare that their lack is over, that increase is upon them right now, that greater grace and blessing that makes the work easy is coming upon their life. I declare increase, double for their trouble, abundance, breakthrough, blessing, victory, overcoming power to be upon this ministry. Vision, let it come forth today. Breakthrough, let it come forth today. And Father, we thank you. And we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Come on, if you believe that, put your hands together and give God an overflow shout today. Ah, oh, come on and give the Lord a praise. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. You may be seated for just two minutes. Don't leave. I want to reach out so that I make sure I heard what I believe the Lord said to us. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. God said increase. Did I hear that right? God said more. Did I hear that right? God said multiplication. Did I hear that right? God said favor. Throw your head back and say favor. Oh, favor. God said no lack. Somebody said no lack. God said blessings. Somebody say I'm blessed. You are so blessed. You are blessed. When the Lord blesses you more, don't ever close your hand. As the Lord began to speak to us, thank you, Pastor Jay. God said, release. Give the Lord a hand clap for the man of God. I've known him before he got in ministry. And I've watched God elevate him year by year. There's an anointing upon his life. God says he's going to move you along as you serve. Somebody say amen. I love the fives. I had never thought of that. Fifteen is three fives. Five is a number of grace. In other words, favor. Somebody say favor. Somebody say favor. Call it in every day. Favor. Favor. And God's going to bless your life. Reach over and grab the hand of the person sitting next to you. Father, we received the word today. Would you make it clear even more in second service? 
would you impart it even deeper into our spirits at the next service? Lord, we thank you. We heard your word that you loved us and you kept us here. We are still here. In the face of adversity, in the face of demonic activity, you have sustained us. And I just want to say thank you. In the face of problems, in the face of situations, you have sustained us. Thank you. In the face of the ups and downs of life, you have sustained us. So we receive your word. Raise your hands all over the house. Raise your hands and say, I receive it. Thank you for Pastor Jay. Thank you for his wife, Tiffany. Thank you for his church. As he is poured into our hearts, would you pour back into his. Thank you for this man of God. In the name of Jesus, we love you today, Father. And we declare, as we lift our hands in your house, we declare increase, multiplication, favor, more, blessings, no lack, and supernatural release. So we thank you for your people today. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody throw your head back, head back and say, 